Hello, I wanted to do a brief overview of how I implemented the hardware on my uh, PSOC port of uh, Gerbil, the CNC controller. With PSOC, uh, you put all the hardware devices onto a schematic. And in my case, for the Gerbil port, I had a three-page schematic. First page has system stuff, second page has general I.O., and the third has motor interrupts. To implement a hardware item in the schematic, uh, you simply go over to the component catalog and drag something out. Uh, you can see all these different communications um, components. Um, I use the UART. Simply drag it out onto the schematic and then you configure it. To configure it, you double click on it. Uh, so here are the settings I used for the UART. Uh, it's a full UART. I set the baud rate and I also set up uh, the data bits. In the advanced tab is where you can set up things like uh, buffers and interrupt sources. Uh, for Gerbil, um, I did not want to transmit uh, interrupt. Uh, I wanted uh, the com component to deal with uh, the, the TX buffer by itself. So I gave it a big buffer and no interrupts. For the receive, I do want one just to follow more closely with um, what Gerbil is doing and how it um, has some real-time commands and some commands that it buffers. So uh, I set it up interrupt for that, and the default when you use an interrupt is uh, four bytes. Um, it then maps it to two I.O. pins, and then you can attach uh, an interrupt. An interrupt is uh, just dragged out and dropped onto the canvas like that. The nice thing about um, the pins is they are configurable. They can go virtually anywhere uh, on the chip um, to say where you want it to go so it matches up with your um, design. You go into the uh, wiring diagram and for the pins and you find your pins and you can set them to any available pin. Um, I have quite a few pins. Um, when you map them, they show up as blue, and that's where you can see them. Real nice feature. A lot of times, uh, at least I mix up RX and TX um, to mate with another set of RX and TXs, and it's real easy in PSOC just to switch them. The next item is um, the stepper timer. Stepper timer um, is just dragged out, um, again, from the component catalog. Uh, then um, you supply it with a clock, uh, which is um, what it's using to count. Uh, and it's um, very easy to set any clock you want. Um, you could just say, I want 16 hertz, a very slow one, and it'll allow you to do that. In this case, I want to pick a very fast clock. So I'm picking the bus clock of 24 megahertz. Um, that will give me a uh, really good resolution on this uh, timer. Uh, and it has to do with the way Gerbil uses this timer, that the more uh, resolution you have, the better. I also set it up as 16-bit. You can set it up as 8 or 16 on this chip, um, and that will give me more control. The last thing on this page is the EEPROM. Um, this really isn't um, a hardware component per se. But when you uh, use it and you put it on a schematic, it generates an API for you. Um, and this makes things um, very easy. And you can see here it's generated some source code for this. And if you look at the uh, header file, you can see all of the um, functions it's generated. It makes it really easy. Um, if you look at um, what it takes to put a character into EEPROM e -E -prom in normal uh, Arduino Gerbil, it's quite complex. If you go back to um, this implementation, you'll see the same function only uses um, a single line. So it's very good for abstracting the hardware. Uh, so you could manually 
write all these routines, but I find it much easier when doing these ports to use the uh, API that J they generate. I do the code in Gerbil, and some expert at Cypress does the EEPROM code. The next tab is um, my general I.O. tab, and this is where things get a little more interesting. Uh, I'll start with the control inputs. So Gerbil supports a bunch of control inputs for um, button pushes for things like feed hold, cycle store, safety door. Um, but they're um, somewhat limited. You have to put them all on a single I.O. port. Um, and the configuration is a bit complex. In this case, I implemented it by dropping down a I.O. pin. Um, I.O. pins are just grabbed and dragged out. Um, then um, in the case um, with my implementation here, I gave these all a resistive pull-up. Um, you can add external schematic so if it's in blue it's really not on the chip but it's just for you to remember how you're implementing it on the real hardware so in this case it uh, switches to ground so i want that pull up um, then i run them all into a control register the um uh, that allows me to read it as a single byte um, and that's the way uh, native Gerbil likes to do it. Um, but uh, while it's a single byte, these can come from virtually any I.O. pin, um, and then they're ganged together into a single byte uh, in this control register. Um, and then I have any of these generate an interrupt so that I can read it and know a, uh, a switch has been clicked. Uh, in the case where these are switching to ground, I want to invert the logic. And this might not always be the case uh, uh, in uh, another implementation. So having this here makes it real quick to just get rid of it um, and then just wire it directly. Um, and that's a real handy way of determining whether it's normally high or normally low. Um, if you look at uh, the CPU map of uh, native Gerbil, you'll see that this is how you do it. Uh, and you see um, you're basically limited to a single port and then um, you're mapping the bits uh, or mapping the actual pins of that port to their functions you're creating some masks um, for me this is um, a little bit daunting to look at trying to figure out what these values are and just reading it um, i find it much easier just to look at this schematic and say i know exactly what's happening um, and again i can assign these pins anywhere I want. They do not have to be to the same uh, I.O. port. Uh, here it is with the status probe, basically a repeat of that. Um, you'll see I have a clock here. That's for some extended um, things that um, uh, these pins can do. Um, in this case, I'm going to ignore it. I'm just going to have it act like a, a normal port. Now I'll look at the limit switches. Uh, the limit switches uh, are interesting as well. They have this um, uh, external uh, components here showing you how this actually works. The, the switches in this design are switching to ground. I'm running them through a debouncer. Debouncer will, um, uh, of course, debounce but take out a little noise. Um, so that the pulse has to be a, a given length um, and uh, that'll prevent some false triggers. You can use the clock to set the length of the debouncing. Uh, in this case, I'm using 16 hertz and I'm wiring that to each of these um, that I have here. Uh, still experimenting with the, uh, the best value to use. 16 hertz seems to work okay for me. Um, you notice that I also have... Um, uh, a fourth axis here. Um, I have this running all the way up to six axes. Very simple. I simply change this to six axes. Now I can attach two more. The um, There's very little code change inside uh, the Gerbil. Return that. 
again running it through the optional inverts. Um, for the spindle, nothing really special here, um, but I am using um, you know one of their components to do this. Um, you set the um, clock and then you set the period and compare value in here. Gives a little graphic to see what's going on. Um, I just have it set at 50 um, percent here, but of course it's in the Gerbil code that um, sets most of it. Um, so one thing is once you generate this design, it's going to create an API. And it's very easy to look at the API that's generated. You can see this is oops, this is the PWM component, and I can look at my API. Um, and in this case, you can see you can see what it is. Um, and I would do some of these write functions to um, set the actual value. Uh, very simple. Um, uh, there's also some discrete um, outputs here. These are things like the flood coolant. See, these aren't attached to anything. If I look at them, you'll see they're digital output, but with no hardware connection. If I turn the hardware connection on, you'll see that it, it's allowed the hook to something. Uh, if the hardware connection is on, it's ex it's expecting to be fed um, by another um, component. Um, but if I just want to write to it from firmware, I would um, turn that off. The last section is the motor section. A uh, lot going on here. Um, let me look at the simpler stuff first. Motor direction pins, very straightforward. Um, I have a control register, which is sort of the output version of a status register. Um, feeding into uh, the direction pins. Um, Native Gerbil likes to you treat these as one byte. I like to spread them out through various I.O. ports, so this is a nice way of doing it. Um, I can write a single byte. These things can go virtually anywhere they need to go. Um, once you map the um, pins uh, in here, They'll show up. They always show up a little small, hard to read, but you can see where they go here. Um, and you can see that they're, they're all over the place. They're not on a single IO port. Very handy. Um, this, there is no penalty for this. This is all done in hardware. There's no code, um, running here. So, um, uh, it's, it's a very good thing to do. Um, motor enable, um, nothing special there um, the step generation uh, several things going on here um, first of all um, writing to a single byte control register again I can change that you know to any any number I want um, but uh, let's look at this one first this is a direct output but this is a pulse output um, this is perfect for a step generation. You don't have, you have to keep a step on for a certain period of time and then turn it off for the next one. Uh, it gets a little complicated. You have to use interrupts and actual real code in firmware. Um, but here I can use a pulse and the pulse is set by the, um, clock. So I say take a step, which turns the pin on and then hardware turns it off. So it's going to these again, these are spread out all over the IO ports, but I've also tapped off of this to send it to something else. Now this is a custom component. I did another video on these, but this is a component I wrote. Um, and this is for uh, a feature that my stepper drivers have where with a single digital pin, you can reduce the current um, to one third. Uh, this is great for when the motors come to a stop. They've got a lot of excess torque and they're not doing anything. Um, and you don't want your motors heating up. You can uh, lower the torque when they're idle. But you don't want to lower the torque immediately. You want to let it just settle for, you know, at least a fraction of a second. So that's what these do. It, um, it 
sees the pulse on the pin, um, then uh, keeps the torque up for that given length of time. Uh, and it's all set by uh, a clock. And also in here, I have a, a, a duration, which is basically clock cycle. So 48 um, hertz uh, divided by 24. So it's going to hold it up for a half second after the last pulse. Um, this is great. This is all running in, in pure hardware. This does not require any firmware uh, to be written or the overhead associated with the firmware. The last thing I have uh, is setting the motor current. Uh, my setup uses a 0 to 2 volt range to set a 0 to 4 amp range. I'm using basically a modified X controller. Um, so I'm using DAX um, and programmable gain amplifiers to get that voltage. The DAC um, has a built-in reference voltage of either 0 uh, to 1.02 or 0 to 4.08. Uh, for me, this one's going to work better. And then in the gain, I set a gain of 2, and that puts an output of uh, two times what this is. Um, so that's very easy. And if you want the code that I have to put in firmware, I created a new file um, for motor current setting, uh, and it's very simple. I start the VDAX, I start the uh, PGAs, then I set the current, and very simple. So very easy to set up this current. That's basically it. I hope you found this interesting and could uh, possibly get interested in this project and help me out.